lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation, especially right now. The life has knocked you down. Pick yourself up with bootstraps and bra straps. Get your copy at www.sheilamack.com today. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio, Mondays at 1 and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific Time. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio, Mondays at 1 and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific Time. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, Reality at its Finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories about ways you can rebuild, reinvent, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest Farhad Kardani. He is known as Coach Kardan, and he is based in Dubai, yet he also works in New York and a lot in Japan. His wife is from Japan and he has a 12 year old and he does a lot of training and has a big company in Dubai that works with leadership programs and leadership training. So today, one of my favorite leaders, Coach Cardon is here to share his message and help you to rebuild and reboot your life. Welcome to the show, Coach Cardon. Thank you so much, Japanese. Arigatou gozaimashita. So uh, I spent most of my adult life in Japan. Uh, a big part of my personality has become Japanese. I apologize if Japanese coming out. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. I appreciate that. Yes. Well, it's wonderful to have you on the show. I'd love to learn more about your journey and how you ended up working in, in Japan and du Dubai. Yes, well, you know, um, the destiny and destination and the universe will take us to places that we never imagined. Um, I remember when I was a young kid uh, around age 12, 13, 14 years old, back home in Iran, uh, I used to watch this uh, Japanese TV series, a drama called Oshin. It was a story of a young kid. She was very strong and she had a lot of dreams. And I said to my grandma, I want to go to Japan and marry Oshin. And she just looked at me. She said, that's a great idea. And just, I believed her. <laughs> so uh, going to Japan and marrying a Japanese became one of my dreams. And I was always fascinated in the brand Made in Japan. So I wrote a book called Made in Japan by Mr. Morita the director of Sony many years back and um, that book really changed my life. So I went to Japan and I loved it and I wanted to stay only for a year. 
but I stayed for 25 years and the rest is history. Wow. Wow. And then you ended up in Dubai. Well, uh, let me tell you uh, a little bit about myself. And again, I'm really grateful uh, for the invitation. And I just want to um, thank you for this. Uh, it's, it's an honor to be with you. I have some really, really important message for your audience and anyone who's listening. It's mm -hmm. extremely challenging for me to give you 52 years of my life in few minutes. So I'll, I'll try. Let's see what happens. Um, today, I want to focus on leadership and empowerment. Why? Because right now, today, we are really living in a place with whatever happened also, especially this year. I truly believe every single one of us need to be responsible, accountable, and having ownership of all the problems that are happening for us, or sometimes we say to us, um, and own that, and that that requires leadership. And so, when I talk about leadership, I'm not talking about political leadership or you know um, organizational leadership. If you're a mom or dad, you must learn how to lead by example. Otherwise, your kids are not going to listen to you. So, um, leadership is about influence, and I want to talk about um, how I ended up studying leadership and why. Uh, where did that come from? I can put it in two simple words, painful experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, you know, I really didn't have a good childhood. I grew up in a place that my father was married five times. And as long as I can remember, uh, stepmoms coming and going, and I never had a chance to meet my own mother. I'm 52. Just a year ago, I found my mom and we're going to catch mm -hmm. up very soon. So it has been an amazing journey. I get goosebumps, mm -hmm. but I'm really grateful that even though it took over 50 years, but I never gave up and thanks to the technology. So we eventually found each other. Um, I was abused by one of my stepmothers in a really harsh way and she wanted to end my life when I was 10 years old. So I had to leave home back in a town called Shiraz in the southern part of Iran and I became a homeless kid. And while I was homeless, um, I was looking at why my father couldn't communicate with his partners in life. So something was missing. At that time, I didn't know it was a leadership. <laughs> but then the universe and God or whatever our spiritual belief is sent me something. A man came to my life at age 12. I was 12 years old and he took me under his wing and he became my mentor. He had a beautiful wife and five kids. And I looked at him and his model of success was, by the way, he was a graduate of a, uh, one of the U.S. universities and he came back to Iran because he loved Iran. He never wanted to leave his country. So he came back and he was serving, um, you know, his country. And he gave me a chance to live with him for two years as a carpenter or cleaner in his house. He just wanted to support me. And he really impacted my life. And some of the stuff that I'm going to share with you today is the lessons that I learned from my first mentor from age 12. Mm -hmm. And he said, you need three things in life if you really want to have a beautiful life and have ultimate joy and happiness. He said, the first one is your vision for life, who you want to be. The second is the decisions that you make. And then the last one is the action. So the vision and decision and action, the VDA, became my success cycle from a very young age. So he used to ask me, what is your vision for the next 50 years? And I used to tell him, I don't have a vision for my next two years, you know? And so okay, let me help you. If you don't learn how to design your life, somebody will design it for you. And most people are crappy designers. They don't know how to design your life. So you better learn that skill. And um, so I started, you know, and then he said, who do you want to be? I said, one of the things, one of the positions I want in life is I want to be a, a leader. I want to be in a leadership position. And he said, why? I said, it's cool. And he said, well, leadership comes with responsibilities. What kind of leader? I said, well, I want to be either, let's say, a doctor. So a doctor is a leader in a hospital. Or I want to be a, uh, a judge in the court because when he arrives, we all rise. You know, <laughs> you know. And when I watch movies, or I want to be an airline pilot. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I want to be in a leadership position where I have trust from myself and the people around me so I can lead, you know, with example, not just because I was lucky, but because I worked hard. 
So he said, okay, so if you want to be a pilot, then you need to work hard, hard around that. So I decided to have this dream of I want to go to America and become an airline pilot. Now, I don't have money at that time. I don't speak English. I don't know anybody in America or outside of Iran. And then at age 10, I didn't have any support f from family. And then Iran in 1978 went through a rough time. The country changed. The brand went down. It's been like that in the last 40 years. And uh, unfortunately, I was abused by the government. I'm walking on the street. I see people attacking people. And, you know, I, they broke my nose and my head. And I made a decision. One day in my life, I want to live in a place that there's no violence. There's no killing. There's no gun. There's no war. So thank God I'm really grateful today. I'm living in the UAE. It's one of the most amazing countries in the world. The leadership here is something that I truly believe the whole world needs to study. This book, Flashes of Thoughts, mm -hmm. um, Flashes of Thought by His Highness Chef Mohammed bin Rashid. He is the Prime Minister of the UAE. This book really changed my life. I came here a few years back to serve one of our Japanese uh, clients. And on my way back to Tokyo, I bought this book at the airport and I bought the plane. I was reading this and this quote got me to move here. He said, to those who would like to leave their mark on this country, I say, the stage is yours. So mm -hmm. what they do here, they really truly put people first, not systems first or not government first. They truly work hard to take good care of their people. And that was what I always want since I was a kid. If I had some photos to show you here, you could see as a 10 year old kid, I had Abraham Lincoln on my shirt. I was always fascinated with leadership and I was always studying the greatest leaders in our history from Abraham Lincoln to John F. Kennedy, to Dr. King, to Gandhi, to all those that they had some impact in our history. I also had some miserable teachers I had to learn from them in our school. They were teaching us about Hitler and his psychology. I was like, why do I need to study about Hitler? You know, but yeah, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, I just learned we need to learn from both teachers, outstanding teachers that can really give you lessons and then warnings. So it's important in life. Anyways, I make my life to Japan. You know, as a young kid, I start working there as a welder in a factory for $7 per hour, save enough money. I went to New Zealand rather than going to U.S. I became a New Zealand citizen. I became a commercial pilot in New Zealand. I made my dream come true. I was really proud of myself. I met my Oshin. I met my wife, Noriko. I married her. Thank God. Right now, I have a 12-year-old kid, and uh, I'm really proud of my family and the love that we share. And one of the decisions I made as a young kid was... I want to be an example, really, anywhere we go as a family, we inspire people with our love, with our caring, with our joy, with our passion. And um, it's been like that. But it, it was hard work. It wasn't just I was lucky and it happened because of the vision that I had, because of the pain that I had. And I used that, the decisions that I made for my future. So that was a personal leadership for me in my life. Now, Again, when we moved from Tokyo to here, because I had a company back in Japan, and um, by the way, I have two best-selling books in Japanese, 25 years of my life experience in Japan got me to be in a position uh, where I lift, I shifted from aviation after the 9-11 because the aviation world changed, and mm -hmm. um, it was a really tough situation uh, right there, even though I was a New Zealand citizen, but then again, being having a background of Iranian, um, you know, background. So it was an easy time. But then I said, God, what are you showing me here? I was always fascinated in teaching and coaching. So I met a few mentors and coaches around the world that really touched my life. And as a result, I realized, wow, I love teaching. So I became a teacher and coach and started with you know a small group of a uh, number of people in Japan and then that grew and then I wrote a book in 2008 I was doing a seminar in Tokyo for around 300 people this gentleman raised his hand and he said Mr. Cardon, um, do you have a book? I said, I have it here. I decided to write a book when I was 10 years old. He said, if you decide to write it, I'm a publisher. I want to help you. I want you to go watch a movie called Coach Carter by Samuel L. Jackson. And I said, I love that movie. And he <laughs> said, your first name, Farhad, is very hard for the Japanese to pronounce. So we want to put the brand Coach Cardon. Go get your qualification. You have some of them. But then when we called you coach here, that would be the, you got to live like a coach. You got to deliver like, oh, I say, I love it. Let's do it. <laughs> so we, uh, we did the first book called uh, The Power of Decision. And I'm really grateful through that book. We, uh, we reached and touched thousands of people. 
And um, the only challenge was because the book was in Japanese, it was only for the Japanese community. In 2011, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of our clients asked me, hey, you got to write another book. So we wrote my second book uh, called From Desperation to Inspiration. That book also became a bestseller. And that book led me to start working with corporate leaders, um, politicians, and athletes. So they start calling me and I went in and, uh, you know, thank God. Uh, they made the result. I was just a guide, but I helped them to close the gap. And then in 2015-16, uh, uh, we moved to UAE. The universe brought us here, and my wife was happy to come and move here. And this is one of the best countries in the world. I'm really uh, proud that I made that decision. I've been to over 40 countries, mix of three nationalities. Mm -hmm. Now, this year, um, we created a program for the Emiratis for Arabs in this region called Emirates Youth Leadership 2020. My goal was how can we train 2020 young Emiratis to become better leaders for the future of their country. And mm -hmm. one of the skills in leadership is public speaking and they loved it, they needed it. We spent 14 months doing a research and we created a program. I'm really proud of this program and we are teaching it now. So um, yeah, uh, Emirates Youth Leadership. That's a little bit about myself. <laughs> Sorry, it took a little bit long. <laughs> no, that's wonderful. And you know, I remember visiting Dubai many times. I would stay over when I was heading to India to do studies and <laughs> and I loved it there. I was with a group, uh, with Tony Robbins group. And so we were having a blast in Dubai and it is a beautiful place to visit and I imagine live. So that's, that's incredible. And one of the things that, that is important that I found with my own six children, I adopted three and I have three of my own. They're grown now. But to lead your home, it starts with the home. And right now, a lot of us around the world have been sent home because we're out so much that we miss the most important family values. And the thing is, is you can be a leader no matter what position you're in, whether you're young or old, it doesn't matter. You're just starting out or, or just beginning to be in a company. You could be the lowest on the rung. You just got hired yesterday and your energy and how you show up, who you're being and all you're doing is going to lead the entire group. And you will be, you will be, you'll become a leader quickly and people will see that and you'll get higher positions quickly because of how you're showing up now for public speaking this year it's so important because now we're all public speaking we all have to be on the zoom calls with our work teams or you know leading our family because now we're <laughs> we're in charge of education i know two of my my children are college age and the dorms closed so now they are back home and i am so i'm as a mom i am loving every minute of having my big grown babies home but it is difficult and it's different so there's that and it's important to remember to have fun to lead with with all that's going on, I think that the, the younger people, especially my my generation, my kids' generation, they're all, I hear them talking with friends and everything, and they're looking at the history and they're realizing how important learning history is and that they are the leaders of the future and they're making changes now. So that is incredible. I do recall back in the day, in when the Iran had the difficulty and and there was a big change in the government because I had neighbors that moved over from there and they literally had to they were very well to do in 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 Iran and then they moved over to our country and they had nothing they had to start over from scratch in fact I think I was the one that that taught them English so <laughs> and I was just this little kid and it was it was one of those situations where I got to hear the real stories from real people and we we were friends now they were really my grandparents age back then so they they were very established you know they were probably maybe in their 70s so coming to a new country and they they managed to buy a home and rebuild and start a new business and all these beautiful things. In fact, uh, when when Philip passed away, I had Vala in my home with me for about six or eight months until she ended up moving to Spain with one of her sons. But so we became family. 
And there's something beautiful about being, yeah, being able to connect with people from all over the world like you have. And now we have a chance. We don't even have to leave our homes to be able to connect with people all over the world in a new and different way and learn about how to do public speaking and talk with people so that they're listen to your incredible stories. So that's important. I'd love to hear more about um, some of your leadership training and public speaking programs. Sure. Uh, yes, of course. You know, um, well, I prepared my whiteboard here. Hopefully we can use that. Uh, we had other options of digital stuff, but I'm old school. So, uh, you know, a couple of things that I really uh, learned from a very young age, and I'm using these principles in my own life, whether again, um, as a father or as a teacher. Um, but then again, um, it, it's very important that when we look at what's working, what's not working, I truly believe uh, our personalities and our characters as a leader, who we become is the first thing that we need to focus on. So who are we becoming every single day and what personalities you know, we, we want to have and how we want to impact the people around us, but really starting from ourselves. Who do we want to be mentally? Who do we want to be emotional? How strong do we want to be mentally? What kind of language patterns do we want to use to empower people? Um, you know, uh, who do we want to be physically? Who do we want to be spiritually? What is our spiritual uh, the vision or spiritual mm -hmm. practice every day, regardless of what we believe? Um, you know, who do we want to be really as parents? Who do we want to be, you know, as a human being? Um, I truly believe, again, this coming from, again, painful experience, I had to believe in my life at a very young age that all of us on this planet, we are a family mm -hmm. and we just don't know each other. So if the universe bring us together, the first thing we need to do is to listen to each other's needs and desires and dreams and goals and pains and then see if we can help each other. I think that's really, it makes sense. And again, I shouldn't say thank God because of the COVID, but thank God that right now the situation because of this painful experience got us to a point to stop doing what we're doing and then look at each other and listen more and see like, wow, there are a lot of things we didn't know about each other yet, but now we can talk to each other, we can connect with each other and we can help each other. I think that's one of the mission that we are supposed to have to protect our planet, to protect each other. And if we don't know who we wanna be, then it's gonna be really hard with all the obstacles that are ahead of us. So it makes sense, who do you wanna be as a man, as a woman, as a leader, what is the characteristic that you're looking for? So um, I learned, you know, you're talking about Tony Robbins many years back. I mean, I had also the privilege of learning from him. He was one of my mentors and uh, teachers. I've had also the, uh, the privilege of working with his son. He's been my coach and, you know, we've done some remarkable work together. We've traveled together to over 20 countries in the last 10 years. I mean, he came to Tokyo and helped us with a lot of our leadership training programs. And he's done a massive job with value add to the Japanese community. So one of the things that I learned was really, he also talks about that in his book, Live It. A mm -hmm. lot of people try to learn something and all the time and they're looking for certifications and they need a lot of certainty with that. And then they go out and they want to teach a lot of stuff, <laughs> but they're missing the middle chunk, which is called live it. <laughs> so Jack always say, you got to learn it and you got to live it and then you can give it. But a lot of people just go learn it. They get excited and they want to give it. But then, you know, they want to talk about, let's say, finance, but they're broke. So because they're not living it, it doesn't make sense. So who you want to be is the first key for me. And I learned that really authenticity and integrity is incredibly important for a leader that Tony Robbins taught me something called your code of conduct as a leader. So be something, not just focus on doing something. So I made my own code of conduct, uh, which is really simple. Every day I focus on who do you want to be? I want to be kind, I want to be nice, be a lover, be a giver, be a doer. And I have a list of a whole B. Be creative, you know, be kind to people, be generous, be outrageous, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. So that code of conduct, I really suggest if people can start creating that, who do you want to be? A code that can describe them, a code of conduct, 
that can describe who they want to be and just practice that daily. It's really not so rocket science, but it could be one of the rituals that ends to better leadership. Um, the second thing that I really believe is important for leaders is not just who you want to be, but then how you want to live. This how part is also incredibly important. How do we want to live in life? And now this one, I'm talking about the process. I'm talking about how people want to live from the morning to the, you know, to the end of the day or the lifestyle that they want. The lifestyle. So you wake up from morning to tonight and we get caught up with all the stuff that we're doing and we forget about what process we want to have. What is our you know, ideal day, the dream day? And if we don't design that, just we open our eyes, we are 50, 60, 70, 80, we look back and we, we, we see we only lived one-tenth of life. What happened? Because this wasn't a top priority. How do we want to live? So mm -hmm. for leaders, again, one of the things I learned again, out of painful experience of seeing bad leadership, was leaders are supposed to empower. Leaders are supposed to inspire with their stories, with their language patterns, with their body language, with their humor, with their, you know, tr being truthful, with their integrity, with their honesty, and, you know, speaking the unspoken, all of these things. And you have to really have a style that people trust you when you do that. It's, it's not an easy job, otherwise, Everybody will do it. So how you want to live is incredibly important so you can become an example of possibility for others. And lastly is what is it that you want to give back to the society? What is your contribution? What is your call for giving? What do you want to give that excites you as a leader? So again, if you want to just send your kid to great school, all right, maybe that's one of the things you're focusing on. That's what you want to give. But daily, what are some of the things, the simple things that you can do to give back to the society? You know, you're working in a building, you walk into an elevator in the morning. Maybe what you can give is simply look at people in the eye and say good morning with your love and with your attention rather than just being on your phone all the time or not being present. Giving doesn't have to be a big chunk of money or making a huge difference in the world. It could be really simple step process to you be proud of what you're doing, what you're giving back. I mean, mine is very simple. Every single day, how can I appreciate and enjoy my life every day? And of course, how can I reach and touch at least one person, at least one person and help them to believe that they can do anything if they choose to. Right now, before we start this talk, I just get a message from a young um, Emirati girl. She's asking me, my husband and I, we want to move to Japan and we need some guidance from you. And I said, while I'm waiting, let's rock. What do you need? So, and it was beautiful. I said, Michelle accomplished, even though I've done a lot more today, but it was kind of like a closing for me for today. And here we go. We have another one here. Right now it's 11.30 at night in Dubai. Uh, but I'm still here with you. Yes. So hopefully this, this message is going to reach and uh, touch somebody's life. That is so wonderful. And thank you for being up late for us here in the United States. And this, this does get broadcast everywhere. So wherever you're listening, whatever time of the day, I do believe that whenever somebody comes on the show, whoever needs to hear this message is listening. And so that's that's how I go. And I, I do love love what you have here. The who, who are you being? Now in my book, my my first the B in the boots formula is also being. It's who are you being in all you're doing. And I created this mantra about it's it's all about who I'm being and all I'm doing. And I no matter if I'm, you know, walking my puppy or cleaning my house or or working with clients, having fun with family and friends, it's how I'm showing up that's gonna be felt and experienced by everyone around me. And that makes all the difference. So I love Absolutely. all that you're doing. Now, do you have some pointers as far as for people that are now having to not be so shy and get online and get on on the camera like we are right now and share and lead. So it's kind of public speaking in a different way, but a lot of people have had to do that and get over the fear of speaking and sharing as much now that this is the way a lot of companies have to be. Sure. Yes. sure. Well, 
you know, my, my simple, I shouldn't call it advice, my simple maybe one point lesson would be, uh, it's called arrow philosophy. Usually when we speak, there is an arrow, it's either towards us or towards our audience or listeners or the people that we are supposed to give something to. That's why we want to learn how to speak. Why? Because we either have a message we want to give, we have an initiative, an idea, a product or service, whatever it is, we want to give it to the society. We need to learn not to you know, do not what to do to give it to them. You need to learn how to give it to them, how to talk about that product or service. And that how part, a huge part of it is about emotional mastery, emotional mm-hmm. fitness. And a simple key about emotional fitness is when we focus on ourselves, the arrow comes towards us. We just want to be loved and we don't want to feel like, oh, we are not enough. So, you know, and that's our fear, as you know, major fears that we have. So we focus almost 70% of the time on ourselves. Do they love me? Is what I'm saying makes sense? I mean, look at their face. They're supposed to be like this, but they're like this. That means probably they don't like me. So you start having all these crappy conversations with yourself in your head. Of course, you're going to get nervous. So what I always say is if there is a simple three-step chunk in any presentation that people want to go through, which by the way, right now, I mean, I'm sorry, I know our time is limited here. I'll make it very quick here. I highly suggest everyone to write a simple horizontal line in a piece of paper and then have one vertical line in the beginning and one vertical line at the end. And we call this your timeline presentation. Let me bring it closer so you can see that. So if you divide this to three simple chunks and the first one, you call it your ID as in identification, and the middle one as MC as in your main contents, and the last one would be your R, which is the results that you're after. All you need to do really in the beginning before you even hold your phone and want to start practicing how to do a one minute or three minute presentation is have an outcome of this and tell yourself, what kind of results do I want for people from this three minutes, five minutes, whatever presentation it is? And it's usually all of these are the same. One of them, you want people to have fun. One of them is you want to add value to people. One of them is you want them to take some sort of action. One of them is you want them to maybe come back to you and repeatedly learn from you. And hopefully one of them is I want to earn some cash from my whatever I do. It eventually leads to money making. So if you come back from the end and you structure your presentation backwards, Stephen Covey used to say, you know, begin with the end in mind. That's what exactly it is. Then once you know who your audience is, before you start, you prepare enough. You'll have a checklist. This is what I learned in flight school. You need to have a checklist of what you want to do. And then A stands for the after you finish, you need to check a few things. How can I do maybe a follow up if they need me? But then this is the easiest part, actually. If you have a three to five minute presentation, you know, you can only spend around one minute in each of these and you can talk about just one point. And then once you come to a place that you need to finish your presentation, then at the end, when you finish, you look back, you go like, wow, I I got at least three, four of these out of five. But the ID part is where people need to really start working hard, which is building rapport with an audience and telling a simple story about their life and ups and downs. That's what exactly we did here. I told you about, you know, 52 years of my life, how I could put it in a nutshell. You know, I mean, having two books, it's extremely hard to tell you everything about my story. But all I need to tell you is some of the tough things that happened in my life. How did I use those experiences to make better decisions? So when people listen, they go like, wow. I want. I am either like you, we call this the me too, creating the me too here. I am either like you or I want to be like you. Mm-hmm. So you empower people. And this is the part that a lot of leaders need to learn. And they're running away from this because they don't want to share their personal stories. They just come in. Hello, everybody. How are you? Let me tell you what I want to tell you today. We go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Excuse me. Who are you? <laughs> so here's the piece that people need to earn the right. This earning the right is only coming from two things. What have you studied in life and what is your life experience? And people want to know these two. And if you talk about that a little bit, then they go, like, oh, I better listen to him or her. Right. So hopefully this will help. But this is a 
structure of a leadership presentation that a lot of leaders, again, they spend a lot of time focusing on here, but honestly, these two chunks, the beginning and the end is way more important than the lessons that you're going to teach. So I hope it helps. I love that. That is so true. And I know the other thing is you mentioned uh, Tony and Jarek, and we've met, um, I think maybe at Tony's event, but definitely through Jarek's event is when I got to know you a little bit more and heard about your story and invited you onto the show. So it's important to also have people in your life, a, an incredible peer group and continue to be a learner. So one of my other mantras is I'm a lifetime learner and a wisdom earner. And that is something we are fueling our minds with what we need instead of fueling with just the bad news or what's going wrong, ask what's going right and how can I learn from other people's experience so I don't have to go through all those steps and I can get to mastery faster. And that makes all the difference. Yes, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, again, it's a journey. If you and I, we believe you're a lifetime students mm -hmm. and I, you know, I know we both have been through a lot of ups and downs in life. We allowed life to touch us, but never crush us. Mm -hmm. So that's the key. You want to be a great leader. You want to help other people. You need to really become mentally strong, emotionally fit mm -hmm. and make decisions that most people are, you know, they want to avoid, but those are how we become stronger version of ourselves because we accept the problems or we call them gifts. <laughs> right, right. And they are, yes. and it's funny, when we find the gift in the problem, the problem part disappears. It just dissolves. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, today I was talking to a, a gentleman who was complaining about some of the challenges. I said to him, look, let's go back three years ago. Three years mm -hmm. ago, what you're talking about right now, it was your dream, right? He was like, yeah. I was like, so if I told you at that time you're going to have this, will you accept it? He said, absolutely. I said, sure. So now that now you know, I'm telling you, it's a gift. He said, wow, I never thought about it that way. <laughs> so our problems are really our gifts. We just need to have more quality of those problems rather than just focusing on the things that we don't want every day. And uh, life will be different life. Yes. And I'd love to learn about your books. So there, you have books in, in Japanese right now. Yes. Well, one of my, um, you know, outcomes and absolutely commitment because of this pandemic, I put really urgency more on it because, you know, uh, people keep asking me, hey, you learned your Japanese in two months. How did that happen? I tease them all the time. I said, <clears throat> well, that was me. But then I tell them, look, uh, language or any learning experience always coming from two things, urgency and necessity, mm -hmm. urgency and necessity. When I was in Japan in 1990, I made up a story that if I don't learn this language in less than two months, they're going to kick me out of this country. So uh, I bought myself a simple book called 30 Lessons in Japanese, 30 Days in Japanese. And then I used to learn just one simple lesson every day and then practice it in Japanese. Oh, hello, and then I And then I modeled the language, not just language patterns, but the tone, the body language, how they move. And, you know, in less than two months, I had a job interview for myself and two of my friends. I got a job. They gave me a home. They gave me a car. And it was like a dream. And not many people believed me, um, but it became really one of the things I've done that I'm proud of in my life. So um, learning a language like anything else is all about commitment. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to always uh, write a book in English and not just making it a bestseller for the sake of being a bestseller, but I really wanted to reach as many people as possible, especially those that they are in leadership and management position because they are not using their story. <laughs> you yeah. know? And I wanted to be an inspiration for them and tell them, look, when you tell your story, it's not just to make people feel sorry for you, but how can you inspire people because your success is either from inspiration or desperation? For me, it was more of a desperation, which, by the way, for a lot of people is like that. Yeah. But they just want to hide it They because they haven't been practicing it. It's not easy for them to do. Again, today, everybody has one of these. So mm -hmm. hold it and practice a one-minute presentation in each of these chunks. When you were a kid, the first 10 years of your life, what was the hardest thing that happened to you in your life that you really are not proud to talk about? So what did you learn from that experience and how did you change and who did you become because of that? I mean, for me, being homeless. But nobody believes me when I say 
I always enjoy the process. That's one of my major outcomes in life. I don't work so hard just for the result. I want to enjoy the process. How can I enjoy my life even if I'm homeless? <laughs> you know. Exactly. So my book, my book, um, I'm planning um, by the next year, by the next six to twelve months, to really bring one of the most powerful books in the U.S. Um, because the U.S. is a powerful country. America has always been one of my dreams. I love America. I've been to America more than twenty times. And one of the things I want to do now is I want to write a book that could lead to be a an Oscar-winning picture. And to do that, I really, I mean, I am really committed. I'm very clear about what I want to do in the next five years with this movie and how many people I want to reach and touch. And there is a message in this movie really about accountability, leadership, ownership, and responsibility of who we are, how we can protect each other and love each other. It doesn't matter where we came from. You know, in old days, a lot of people used to point on me because of where I was born. I used to tell them, look, I am not Iran. I was born in Iran. <laughs> you know? But today I'm having fun with that because it's a blessing being a mix of three different diverse nationalities. I've had the opportunity to travel more than 40 countries. I'm a New Zealand citizen with a New Zealand passport. I can travel to over 180 countries. And it's beautiful. So it's all about using what God give, gave you and then structure it in a way that it's not just about you. The arrow that I was talking about must shift 70% that way, only 30% towards you. Mm -hmm. If you can 70% of the time focus on what do they need? How can I help them? Hopefully this here would be an example that probably more than 90% of my focus is how can I reach and touch in such a short period of time, get into people's heart. They go, like, wow, if you could overcome all of these obstacles in life and get here, what is he going to do in the next 10, 20 years? I want to reach and touch as many people as I can in the next few years. That is beautiful. And I can't wait. Uh, we'll definitely have you back on the show when your book comes out to share about that. That is so important. And, you know, that's something we, we both have in common is I was also homeless at 10 to 13 and a half. And it was a grand adventure to me. I <laughs> should have met that time. Where were you? <laughs> in my, I was in Hollywood, right? I was in LA and California and Beverly Hills and, and all that. So it was a it was a, a great place, I guess, if you have to choose to be homeless. And I was making friends and, and spending the, the night at different friends' homes. And I had to learn to be very social, but I also got to know people from every different culture, different economics experiences. And it really shaped and formed who I am today, even at that young age. So this year, if you are going through a tough situation because of the of the COVID or other situations that have happened, remember that sometimes when things go down and and they fall apart, it seems it's because it's reorganizing and rebuilding to something even better. This is the beginning of a decade. And this is the foundation. So how we show up, that who that you have, the being, how we show up this year is going to make all the difference. And and no matter where you're coming from or how you're starting, you can be a leader today. You start leading from where you are and you move forward from there. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I would love to get my hand on your book, actually read that book as well. It's, it's a blessing. You have a book right now and uh, hopefully people get a chance to read that. But really, uh, it was just right on the point that you said. We really need to, I mean, one of my friends the other day said to me, look, if you can't change your life now, you will never change your life. <laughs> and he said, this is the best time because we never had this much pain in life that we couldn't even see each other, touch each other, smell each other, hug each other. They, it was taken away. Everything was taken away. But if you can really do something about that in this time, you are set for the rest of your life. You're going to be fine. So work as hard as you can right now in the next few months to maybe next couple of years. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful opportunity. So that will be my final message for everyone. Never give up. Uh, life is full of beautiful gifts. It doesn't matter. You're a homeless or you're from a country that the brand of that country is not powerful enough. You don't have the technology. You don't have the Facebook, whatever it is. Just make a decision that it doesn't matter what happens. I will find a way. I will find a way is a belief that I had since I was a kid. And I said, this is not acceptable to me. I will find a way. I told myself one day, I would never live in a country that all of a sudden an educated kid with a gun can come to you and say, hey, get out of the car. We need to search the car. That's not acceptable to me. And it took me many years. I changed that. 
I changed me. I couldn't change them. <laughs> I changed me. So uh, there's always a way, as you know it and I know it. That's a belief we both learned. There's always a way if you're committed. And mm -hmm. thanks to our teachers, they taught us those stuff. Yes, thank you. Well, thank you again for being on the show. Is there any last minute advice you want to share as, as we're coming to the end of the interview time with the yes. audience? Yes. Um, I think if you're talking most of your audience, if they are Americans, my um, friendly suggestion <laughs> to my American friends here is be really grateful for your country and love your country. You are extremely lucky if you are born in that, that country, regardless of what's happening around the world, how the world is watching you, how the world is judging you. It doesn't matter. What matters is who are you? Where was that page? Who are you as an American and how much really, how much you know, pride do you have? How proud are you as an American? If you're not an American and you're living in America right now, that's a different story. You might be worried about some of the stuff that is not happening yet, that you're living in a worriness. Go read Dale Carnegie's uh, book, old book, Stop Worrying and Start Living, you know? Don't worry about the problems that are not happening yet. Focus on who do you want to be every day and what do you have in your life right now that really a lot of people around the world, they wish they had that. Mm -hmm. So if you're an American, you have an American passport and you have a country that it's called the most powerful country in the world, be proud of that and use it. You know, if you don't use it, you will lose it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I'm speaking from experience, you know. People many years back, before I was 10 years old, there was this beautiful country and power and all, all that. Mm -hmm. And then bad leadership cost people. And, you know, people didn't appreciate what they had. They made some mistakes. And then that led them to, you know, not being proud of a place that used to be really good. And, you know, you never know they're going to get that back. It may never happen again. You never know. But uh, let's see. But really, uh, my last message is, who you are today, just love who you are, love yourself, other people will love you too. How do you wanna live every day, the process? Mm -hmm. Start planning for that simply, you know? Stop doing some of the things that you're not happy with, step by step, small steps, and then start doing the things that you're proud of and doing, that's, that'll be great. And then finally, really, if every single one of you can share one little story of your life, I promise you, the world will be a better place. You are in that position already. So I'll send you my love and my respect and appreciation. Hopefully this message will reach your heart and hopefully we'll get a chance one day to meet in real life. I love you and thank you. All right, thank you so much. Okay, bye everyone. If you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and I have some news for you. Yes, you. I'm celebrating my third year now on the station and will be expanding the show to a global network as well. You may now find the Sheila Mack Show on all major podcasting channels. And if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, all the episodes are now available for viewing there as well. And I'm asking you for a quick favor. If you like the show, please help support the spread of this reboot channel on YouTube as well. My goal is to help as many people as possible through our interesting times to rebuild, reinvent, and reboot your business and personal life. I also wanted to share a little bit more about how I got here. What I do now and how designing a business career and life on your terms is more than possible at any age or stage in life. I am an enterprisingly forward-thinking consultant, show host, and best-selling author. But how did I get here? Well, I began my career as an entrepreneur and property investment strategist back when I was 23 years young, when I boldly quit my government job with NASA JPL to open my first of five large gift stores while also starting to invest in property. I got to work with some of the world's most loved companies, such as Negotiations, 
on leases with Warner Brothers and winning trips to London as the top-selling Crabtree and Evelyn provider in the U.S. for multiple years. My stores were built on heart as I gave back to the community I came from. So now, some of you know this and some of you don't know this, but as a young girl with parents who were not well enough to care for me, I was homeless at age 10, then in foster care, where it was really hard to get a job while in the system. I finally emancipated at the age of 15 to start college early. While running my stores, I worked with a government program. Back then, it was called Job Training Partnership Act, making my stores an open source training site where close to 200 at-risk youth started their careers. Yes, I began my career helping business leaders and working professionals to design a life they love where they can have success in their careers and get to the business of life. See, a funny thing happened along the way. Uh, When I first opened my gift store, it was kind of crazy because I was this young upstart. That's what a lot of the store owners called me. Uh, My first store was in Montrose, California in this sweet little hometown uh, shopping park with other stores and restaurants nearby. And so I was the young upstart that didn't know what she was doing. At least that's what everybody said. And I didn't really care what they said. (laughs) At that age, you know, their opinion was like, I don't really care. So that that was probably a really good thing because I stayed focused on what I needed to do. And I had negotiated uh, to lease out a 5,000 square foot gift store that needed a lot of work. And I, I got free rent and uh, for about six months and I had to start making the rent, which was 5,000 a month, which was a lot of money back then, a dollar a square foot. And so I had to learn and relearn. I I finally did hire quite soon in the game. I did hire a marketing expert, branding expert, I guess back then. And uh, that lady really helped me to figure things out when I first started. And when you first start a business, especially when you're young, it was like (laughs) I had no idea what to do. But I needed to learn because my rent was going to start coming due every month. And over that time, I started having more success. I did crazy things like stayed open until almost midnight every night, along with the restaurants who were very close to my store, while everybody else closed shop at about 5 or 6 p.m. So I was making more money from the start, and I just really my store was to help my kids and the products I sold was whatever the community wanted. I sold lots of things to people in the entertainment industry. I worked with cruise ships. I worked with many different people in the community. And later on, the store owners actually came to me and asked me if I would consult them and help them. I actually started buying my other buildings because I didn't like the idea of paying rent for years and years and years and not building equity. So I did get my real estate license uh, through that and invested and bought my other four store buildings. And uh, lots of the other store owners worked with me, paid me (laughs) to consult and help them do what I was doing. And I didn't really even know it was called consulting. I just knew how to figure it out, I guess. And so that's how I started my career. And now, you know, I raised six children, all that, and now they're grown. And so I get to come to work every day and do what I naturally do best as an enterprising and forward-thinking business leader. Through my show, courses, and live events, I guide entrepreneurs and working professionals like you through the profitable steps of building a business, creation to expansion, marketing from planning to implementation, wealth preservation through strategic planning and yes, real estate investing, and lifestyle design so that you can earn more while getting back to the business of living your best life. So I do invite you to tune in here uh, to KCAA Radio and also 
I would really appreciate it if you went to my YouTube channel, Sheila Mack Show, and gave a subscribe and a listen to some of your favorite shows. And I do have some other exciting things, including a free gift to thank you. So if you go to www.sheilamack.com, that's S-H-E-I-L-A-M-A-C, SheilaMack.com, there you can get a free gift to get started on your reboot this year. And now back to the show. Tune in again right here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind.